Hi, welcome to our video series about biomimicry life principles. Life principles are design lessons from nature and they can be found in all life on earth. For each of the 26 principles, we will show you an example in the ecosystem of a tree. Just like in nature, life principles are all interconnected. To help us understand them, they are organized into six master principles and 20 sub principles. So, how has life managed to exist and survive for billions of years on this planet? And in all of those ages, the conditions on Earth have changed dramatically. Well, the simple answer is evolution. In this part, we're going to talk about four principles, starting with the master principle, evolve to survive, and three sub-principles, replicate strategies that work, integrate the unexpected, and reshuffle information. Our four examples in the ecosystem of the tree are all from the insect world. We're going to be looking into the evolution of wings. How did wings develop? How did warning patterns that wasps have develop? How did venomous stings in bees develop? And what does sex have to do with everything? Let's start with our first master principle, evolve to survive. Our example here are flying insects and the evolution of wings. In our tree ecosystem, flying insects exist everywhere. They fly around from tree to tree and are absolutely essential for example, the pollination of different trees. So what's the story behind the evolution of wings? Insects have been around for a long time. They used to live in the water mainly, the ancestors of, ancestors of insects. As all life on Earth, they came from the water. And in the water, of course, they didn't need any wings. But some insects started to, to develop body parts, kind of... Uh, appendages, probably somewhere in between the second and third pair of legs, um, that had some function. Maybe those body parts helped them to breathe underwater. And if these body parts were a bit bigger, in some individuals than in others, maybe some insects that already lived on the surface of the water and started jumping around in the air, maybe they were able to stay in the air a bit longer with these body parts. Maybe that was an advantage to survive. They could float for a while, they could jump farther. And when these insects starting, started to live on land over generations, it was a big advantage if these body parts were bigger and they started to really float in the air, jump farther and start to fly. And over time, out of these little appendages, real wings developed. What's our design guideline here? Constantly continue to integrate and process information in order to ensure sustained functionality. Replicate strategies that work. What's our example in nature for this principle? Wasps. And how the hypothesis of mimicry explains how their warning patterns and their colors developed. So wasps, as many of you know, often have a very strong color pattern of yellow and black or red and black, black and orange. And that pattern, that combination of colors is a very strong visual signal. Other animals can see that very clearly 
and it sends a message. It's supposed to send a message, be careful, I'm dangerous for you. Because wasps have a venomous sting, they can hurt you. And that signal, that communication saying, careful, this combination of colors is dangerous for you, that signal is reinforced throughout the system in nature, the more animals have that warning pattern. So if many wasps look very similar and have these strong patterns, it will happen more often that some animal wants to eat a wasp and gets stung and learns, ooh, that color combination is dangerous. So it reinforces itself. That's how many species of wasps develop a very strong visual warning pattern. But there's also a different kind of mimicry. There's also the kind of mimicry where a totally different species starts to mimic the looks of the other species. Because there are many other insects that look similar to wasps that also have the yellow black warning pattern even though they don't have a sting. They're not dangerous. So it was advantageous for them to look similar to the wasps even though they are not dangerous themselves. We can find many hoverflies, many species that look similar to wasps. Where do wasps live in our tree ecosystem? They are a very important part of an ecosystem in a tree. They are predators that eat other insects that might eat the leaves, for, in for instance, of the tree. Um, they are very important uh, parasitic animals often. So they actually often um, act as parasites to organisms that might be dangerous for the tree, for instance. And they live everywhere flying around from here to there. What's our design guideline here? Repeat successful methods. Integrate the unexpected. What's our example in nature for this principle? Stinging wasps, or more complicated name, aculeata. So bees, wasps, ants. They all have a sting, a venom sting, and they use it. The question is, how did it develop? It's a fascinating story. Because ancestors of these insects used to have a part of their body, an organ, kind of like a sting, that they used for laying their eggs. The female insects used this ovipositor, as it's called, used it for laying their eggs. That could be a burrow in the soil, laying the eggs with the ovipositor, or actually placing the egg in or on a plant or even placing the egg inside uh, of another animal, if you're a parasite, parasitic wasp. So placing the egg at the place where your offspring is going to need food is a kind of um, brood care. But over time, some of these insects developed a more intense care for their offspring and they actually started to build their own brood cells somewhere, maybe in an old piece of wood or somewhere else. So they started to build little cells where they would actually bring the food to the cell where the egg is going to, to hatch, where their own offspring is going to hatch. So they would bring their food there. So they didn't need this ovipositor, this, this organ, they didn't need it anymore to lay their eggs. It started to become kind of obsolete for some of these insects. And then something maybe unexpected happened. In some of these insects, something happened in the body that with their sting, which they didn't really use anymore, they were able to use venom. And over time, this developed to become a venomous sting that insects used to hunt or to defend themselves. Nowadays, bees defend themselves with their sting. 
Wrath's attack and and that's the reason why only female bees, female ants and female wasps have a venomous sting. Because in their ancestors, they were the body parts that females had for laying eggs. What's our design guideline here? Integrate mistakes so that new forms and functions are created. Where do we find Aculeata in our ecosystem of a tree? Everywhere. They are extremely important species. Ants are extremely important for everything that's happening um, in the top soil. They crawl around in cooperation with aphids. Uh, they are important nourishment for birds. Bees are important for pollination. Wasps our important predators, they're everywhere in the, our ecosystem of the tree. Reshuffle information. What's our example in nature for this principle? The aphids. And how they reproduct sexually. Aphids are very fascinating animals. And they have a very complex and complicated cycle of generations. And they are actually able to reproduce asexually and sexually. There are many generations of aphids that reproduce in big quantities asexually. So a female aphid is born and she's basically able to clone herself in many generations. But there comes a time when one generation starts to not only give birth to female aphids but also to male aphids and these of course male and females can start to sexually reproduce and a new generation develops after that with a new reshuffling of genetic information. And this sexual reshuffling of genetic information, this sexual reproduction is absolutely basic to life on earth because that is the main method of combination, new combination of genes and characteristics. What's our design guideline here? Exchange information and modify it in order to create new options. Where do we find aphids in our tree ecosystem? They are extremely important. They actually eat, they suck out the, the sugar that plants make in photosynthesis. So they can be anywhere on the green parts of a plant, on the leaves of a tree, for example. And anywhere, anywhere there are, you can find many other animals because aphids are very important food for many animals. They can be an important food for small birds, um, and actually, they are almost kept like dairy cows by ants because ants love the sugary um, liquid that actually comes out of aphids and they protect aphids from other predators so that they can drink some of the sugary fluid that comes from the aphids. Fascinating story. That was part one. To get the whole story, Check out the other five videos about the life principles and our video, What is Biomimicry? See you next time.